hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel so in this video we're going to be solving polytech 2021 math paper one question number one the last part of the equation so last year i did the video of the solution to that particular whole exercise but this portion was left and um i just said in that video that we are going to solve that particular portion which is this question we are about to solve today in another video but with time i got a little bit busy and it was not possible for me to solve that um question again so since the concourse is getting closer students have been asking for the solution to that particular question because it has caused a lot of problems to students so in this video we are going to be looking at the solution to that problem so i first of all give gratitude to all the engineering students that are preparing for their um conco at the grace academy thank you guys once more for always being there and always motivating me to to do videos all right so let's get started okay so like i said last year i never solved this question in the video i did that was so, that was solving the whole exercise where the question was found so um to solve this question remember that we are looking for the general solution of this inequality because it is a trigonometric inequality so we need the general solution and the general solution is because you are solving in the set of real numbers you are not giving a restricted interval so the best method that i'm going to recommend you to use is by using the graph so you can see things clearer so we first of all plot the graph of the cosine function so um, on my xy plane i'm just going to draw the graph of the cosine function which is what you can see and then i'm going to draw the graph of y equal to negative half is simply below the x-axis okay so this is a graph of y equal to negative half and what is in is in blue or sky blue is the graph of y equal to the cosine of x so first we need to find the critical value so we have to solve the equality meaning cos x equal to negative half so solving cos x equal to negative half we just need to take to find the general solution it is simply the principal value plus plus or minus 2k pi because that's the period of the cosine function and the principal value is the cos inverse of negative half which is 120 degrees that is 2 pi on 3 so i choose to write my solutions in radians you can choose to write your solutions in decrease it all depends on you so my general solution will be 2 pi on 3 which is my principal value that is cos inverse of negative half plus or minus 2k pi where k is an integer okay so this is my general solution and if i want to indicate those points on the graph i'm going to indicate it as follows now if k is equal to zero we are going to have x to be 2 pi divided by 3 so that is a point 2 pi divided by 3 now what about um k being equal to 1 you're going to have 2 pi plus 2 pi on 3 plus 2 pi or 2 pi on 3 minus 2 pi in fact this point of intersection simply solves the equation cosine of x is equal to negative half now let us get those um specific values of x that solve the equation cosine of x equal to negative half in the set of real numbers so like i said we begin with our base case when k is equal to zero remember that this case is actually an integer so it could be a positive or a negative whole number including zero so if k is equal to zero we have our x to be two pi on tv which is here but since this graph is actually symmetrical about the line x equal to zero that is the y-axis it means that this other solution here is definitely going to be negative two pi on three now if k is equal to one we have the x equal to two pi on three plus two pi which will give us eight pi on three or we have two pi on three minus minus two pi which will give us negative four pi on three so since there is negative four pi on three on this section it therefore means that 4 pi on 3 is going to be this other value because of the symmetry of the graph about the line x equals 0, that is the y axis. Now, um, we also had an 8 pi on 3, right? So it means that on the other portion, you're going to have the negative 8 pi on 3. We can continue and continue and continue. So we can deduce that the set of solutions that solves the equality, the cosine of x is equal to negative half, is these are the set of solutions negative 14 pi on 3 
negative 10 pi down 3 till so there are infinite solutions that solve that equation because we are not in a, in a restricted interval so we have those solutions but now to solve this inequality we need to actually choose the interval that satisfies the inequality so inequality says that the cosine of x is greater or equal to negative half so graphically it means that we should take the portion where the cosine function lies above the graph of negative half the graph of negative half is the horizontal line as we see y equal to negative half and the cosine function is what is in sky blue so we just need to choose the portions whenever the cosine function is above that graph y equal to negative half so we can indicate the portions with the tick the red tick so in this portion meaning from negative 2 pi on 3 to 2 pi on 3 the cosine function is above the graph negative half now in this other portion also from 4 pi on 3 to 8 pi on 3 the cosine function is also above that graph and okay now we can just end here okay in this portion from negative 8 pi on 3 to negative 4 pi on 3 the cosine function is above that graph now we see these portions that are on tick you see in the portion negative 4 pi on 3 to negative 2 pi on 3 the cosine function is below that graph so we don't need that portion since our inequality says the cosine of x is greater or equal to negative half so it means that we can deduce that the set of solutions are between negative 2 pi on 3 and 2 pi on 3 union between 4 pi on 3 and 8 pi on 3 between negative 8 pi on 3 and negative 4 pi on 3 and so on and so forth so if you want to write it as an interval we are going to have that x is in the interval i added another solution which i never indicated in the graph so we have negative 14 pi on 3 to negative 10 pi on 3 we have negative 8 pi on 3 to negative 4 pi on 3 we have negative 2 pi on 3 to 2 pi on 3 4 pi on 3 to 8 pi on 3 and so on and so forth but this solution is actually very broad so we have to break it down so what we are going to do is that we are going to develop a general term for the upper bounds and we also generate the general term for the lower bounds so we can choose the set of all the upper bounds that we have though it's infinite but we just write down some 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 of the terms so let's begin with the upper bound from here negative 10 pi on 3 the other one is negative 4 pi on 3 we have 2 pi we have 8 pi on 3 as you can see right the upper bounds we have 8 pi on 3 if you continue you have 14 pi on 3 so this is a set of the upper bounds and i've just listed some of the elements so that we can get the general term of all these upper bounds now we clearly see that these elements are actually in an arithmetic progression if we begin with what is in bold and in 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 the yellow coloration if we say okay that is our first term we see that the difference between any two consecutive terms is 6 pi on 3 let's try it negative 4 pi on 3 minus negative 10 pi on 3 is 6 pi on 3 2 pi on 3 minus negative 4 pi on 3 is 6 pi on 3 8 pi on 3 minus 2 pi on 3 is 6 pi on 3 14 pi on 3 minus 8 pi on 3 is still 6 pi on 3 it means that all the upper bounds follow an arithmetic progression and this is the end term a plus capital n minus 1 times d where this capital n defines the number of terms and a is the first term now we have seen that these have a common difference which is um 6 pi on 3 our a we have chosen our a to be 2 pi on 3 because it's our principal value that is for k equal to 0 or for n equal to 0 or it depends on you so it means that um our capital n is going to be small n plus 1 since we are beginning from 0 and we need to end at n okay we are beginning with k equal to 0 and k is ending at n so it therefore means that we have n plus 1 terms so it means the formula becomes a plus n plus 1 minus 1 times d but our a we have chosen it to be 2 pi on 3 and then when we do this 1 minus 1 we get 0 your n remains here and our d is 6 pi on 3 so this becomes 6 n pi on 3 now we can now deduce our general formula by factorizing 2 pi on 3 from the both terms and we are going to get 2 pi on 3 into 1 plus 3 n so this defines the general term of all the upper bounds we can verify to see when n is equal to zero we just have this term boils down to zero and we have two pi on three which is um our positive upper bound here okay now if n is equal to one we have three times one which is three plus one which is four times two which is eight pi on three it gives us 
the next upper bound now let us look at the negative upper bounds so we take negative values of n if n is negative 1 we have 1 minus 3 negative 2 times 2 pi on 3 gives us negative 4 pi on 3 we can see clearly this is a negative upper bound and so on and so forth so now let's let us get the general formula for the lower bounds because we are still going to identify that the lower bounds follow the same trend so the lower bounds let me just list the set of the lower bounds we have negative 14 pi on tv we have negative 8 pi on tv we have negative 2 pi on tv we have um 4 pi on tv we have 10 pi on tv those are the lower bounds so we clearly see that these lower bounds also follow an arithmetic progression the terms in this lower bound follow an arithmetic progression because the common difference that is the difference between any two consecutive terms is a constant and it is still six pi on three but now we can say our first term is negative two pi on three for all the lower bounds because that was the due to symmetry okay when we took for the upper bounds of of as two pi on three we just need to take for the lower bounds as negative two pi on three since there is symmetry there all right so now since we are beginning k from zero it means we are ending at n we see have n plus one terms so the the general solution for our lower bounds is going to be the first term which is negative two pi on three plus um the common difference times n but the common difference is six pi on three if we factor out two pi on three we are going to get the lower bounds to be defined by the formula 2 pi on 3 times 3 n minus 1 so this defines the general formula for all the lower bounds we can test the values to see if it is correct if n is equal to 0 we have the first term to be 2 pi on 3 times negative 1 which is negative 2 pi on 3 Th that is it now if n is 1 we have 3 minus 1 which is 2 times 2 pi on 3 gives us 4 pi on 3 if n is 3 we have um, 9 minus 1 um, if n is 2, sorry, we have um, 6 minus 1, which is 5, times 2 pi on 3 to give us 10 pi on 3. So those are the um, actually positive upper bounds, excluding the first term. Now let us look at the negative lower bounds, meaning we need to take negative values of n. If n is equal to negative 1, we have 3 times negative 1 minus 1. It gives us negative 4 times 2 pi on 3, we get negative 8 pi on 3. If n is negative 2, we have um, negative 7 inside here times 2 pi on 3, we get negative 14 pi on 3. It means that this general formula for all the lower bounds is correct. So we can deduce the general formula of all the um, values of n that satisfies the inequality. It is actually a closed interval beginning from the lower bound to the upper bound. So all the lower bounds follow the formula 2, 2 pi on 3 into 3 n minus 1 and all the upper bounds follow the formula 2 pi on 3 into 3 n plus 1 so let's test to see if we are correct let's begin with n equal to 0 our principal case if n is 0 the upper bound becomes 2 pi on 3 and the lower bound becomes negative 2 pi on 3 which is our first case here now let's take n to be 1 if n is 1 we up here we have um, 3 plus 1 which is 4 and then times 2 pi on 3 gives us 8 pi on 3 now for the lower bound you have 4 pi on 3 which is the second case so it means that this formula works for all values of n that are in the set of integers all right so that is it for the video guys make sure you comment in the comment section um, if the video was good if you need any other explanation you can also comment that in the comment section share the video with your friends who are also preparing for the concours as well as with teachers anybody who is interested in mathematics thank you once more for watching and see you in the next video one thing more for those of you who are still to watch the solution to um the the, the complete solution to math paper one and math paper two of the 2021 session of polytechnic yaounde do well to navigate through this channel you're going to find that video I'm also going to in, I'm also going to include the video link of those two videos in the video description of this video so that you can go and watch if you face any difficulties you can always let me know maybe via the comment section or via my email address or via my number thank you once more and see you in the next video